Good afternoon, student. This is Lillian Mutia, the lecturer who will be taking you shorthand. Shorthand, it's about rapidly dr drilling. And uh, we, we do shorthand using sounds of spoken English words. So, we have consonants, which we, we refer them as strokes. And uh, we have vowels, whereby we will be using consonants and vowels to construct a word and we drill it using shorthand. So, we'll be using a vitamin error, whereby vitamin means rapidly drilling English words to represent a spoken word. Okay, let's start with the consonants. Consonants. We have 26 consonants whereby they are abukudu. Also we have, we have the vowels, whereby we have the a, e, i, o, and u. So we will use these consonants and the vowels to construct a drilling, uh, to construct a stroke. And the stroke is the consonant. In short, and we call the strokes as consonants. So, we will be starting with the first consonants, which are the, the ba, the pa, the ta, da, cha, Ja. Uh, also, we have we have k, we have ma. So, and there are so many. So, we'll be starting with the upward upward strokes, downward strokes. Strokes, carved strokes, horizontal strokes. So, in our case here, we have upward, downward, carved, and horizontal. And each of these uh, of, uh, and each of these strokes will be represented with a certain uh, charts, which are, uh, sorry, shapes, which will direct you on the direction you will be going to drill the, the stroke. For instance, when I drill the, the, when I use downward strokes, downward strokes are the, the pa, ba, ta, da, cha, and ja. We have upward strokes, which are the uh, the way, the y, and the l. Also, we have curved strokes, whereby we have fa, va, sha, za, sa, za. Also, we have horizontal strokes, whereby we have ma, na. G, uh -huh. and uh, ma, na, ga, and ka. Whereby you find the pronunciation of ka, whereby you find the words like carved, you use carved. The starting word which is C, you pronounce it as ku. So, ku can also represent a C sound. Can also represent a C sound. So, let's start with the, how we drill the downward strokes. Whereby,
you will have this shape here. This one is the direction of 45 left, 45 degrees angle, a 90 degrees angle, and a 45, and also a 90. So here, it's re it, uh, the, the, the first one represents the par and bar. The second one represents the ta and da. Third one will represent the ja, the ja and cha. And this one will represent the ku sound. So, if this is my book, and I want to start drilling these strokes, the stroke part, remember, we have a light stroke and a dark stroke. In order to identify whether the stroke is light and dark, you use your pronunciation. You pronounce it so that you can understand, is this a light stroke or is this a dark stroke? For instance, we have pa and ba, and ba. So when I'm pronouncing pa, it's, it's not heavy when you are pronouncing it. That means pa, you use a, uh, it's, it's from your front of your mouth. It's not so heavy like when you are pronouncing ba. Ba, you are using a heavy sound. So this means pa will be a light stroke and ba will be a dark stroke. Okay, so let's drill our light stroke pa and our dark stroke ba. Pa, it should be very light and a bar it will be dark so make sure that you rep you you present these strokes using a light stroke and a dark stroke whereby you will using your sharp pencils to be able to identify is this a light stroke or is this a dark stroke also, we have ta and we have da. When you are pronouncing ta and da, ta is light, da is dark. So, let's drill our ta and our da. The ta is very light. And da is dark. So these are the downward strokes. Also we have the ja and cha. And ja and cha, let us drill it. We have cha, ja. Cha is light stroke and ja is dark stroke. Because cha, it's not heavy when we are pronouncing it, but ja, we use a heavy sound to pronounce it. So, this is my cha. This is my ja. Okay, so these are the down strokes, which are the down straight strokes. The pa, the ba, ta, da, cha, ja. Also, we have the ka, whereby it's represented by a horizontal stroke. And under horizontal stroke, we said we have ka, we have ga, we have ma, we have na, and we have g. So, let us identify how we drill this light stroke. So, you draw your circle. Then a line across. So this curve here, which is lying on your line, it will represent ma. The other one here, this one, will represent na. And this straight line will represent what? Ka or gu. And this 
one also will represent the ga. So let us drill our our horizontal strokes. This is my book. I have ka, ga, whereby they move in the same direction. But the difference is, one is a light stroke and the other one is a dark stroke. So let us identify the light stroke and the dark stroke. When I'm pronouncing ka, ka, it's light. And ga, I'm using my heavy sound, it's dark. So when we are drilling it, using our format here from our circle, I will drill it like ka. And my, this is ka, and my ga will be dark. So make sure that your pencil will identify a dark stroke and a light stroke. So this, this one is my ga. If I'm drilling my ma and na, those are light strokes because we are pronouncing it not using a heavy sound. So I have my ma and my na, <coughs> whereby I'll use this curve to represent my ma, this one. And I will use the other one to represent na. Okay. And also I have ga, whereby you use a heavy sound to pronounce it. Whereby we will indicate it as a ga, which is dark. It should be dark. Okay, so these are now our horizontal strokes. These are the downward strokes. Now let's do the upward, sorry, the curved strokes. The curved strokes. The curved strokes. And we said in our beginning, we said our curved strokes, we have the fa, va, we have we have da. Also, we have sa. We have za. We have sha. We have za. And in order to identify the direction that we will be drilling these strokes, we'll draw a circle. I have a line across it and another one across it. So, we have different curves here in our circle. For instance, we have this one, which will represent the ta and the, the, the heavier the. And the other one, this one, will represent the sa and za. Also, we have this curve here, which will represent fa and va. And this one, the other one, will represent the sha and z. So, these are the way we will be drilling our curved strokes. So, let's have our book here, so that we may show how we will be drilling these strokes in our book. So this is my book, and I have my ta and the. Remember, we have a small ta and we have a bigger ta. A small letter the and a capital the. Why? Because this one, like for example, when we are pronouncing a word they, we use the small ta. When we are pronouncing a word like thank you, we use the bigger da. So the capitalize da. So let us show how we will drill this. The smaller ta will be a light stroke, and the other one will be a 
dark stroke. Why? Because the, the bigger one, the, the capital one, the capitalized one, is pronounced with a heavy sound, like thank you. We are using a heavy sound. When we are pronouncing te, it's so easy to pronounce it. So we are not using a heavy sound. So let us use our, our format here to draw it here. So this is my first, and make sure the curves are straight curves. So don't draw something, don't drill something like this. This one will be not a, will not be uh, the format of that because this one looks like C. Whereby when we go on on our shorter, it will mean another word. So let's use a. We, you, we normally use a straight curved strokes. We have our curved strokes. And as I said earlier, curved strokes we have fa, va, za, sa, sha, uh -huh, za, ta, and da. And we, we, I had drilled our circle here to represent the direction of the how to drill these strokes. And we are starting with the and the. So we will be using a straight curve to represent the, which is light stroke. And a straight curve to present the, which is a dark stroke. For instance, when I'm telling, uh, when I'm saying they, Thank you. I'm using a heavy sound and a light sound. Also, we have the sa and za. For instance, when you are saying a word like so, usually, usually you are using a heavy sound za. But so, we are using the, sa, the curved sa. So, let us see the format of the sa and za and when we are drilling it it should be a straight curve a straight curve so let's start with my sa it will be a straight a straight curve and za which is dark it should be a straight curve, a straight curve. Also, we have the fa and va. Like when we are pronouncing a word like uh, for, vet. For, we are using a light sound. Vet, we are using a heavy sound. So let us see how we will drill these curves, the fa and va, whereby fa is light and va is dark. So we have our fa and we have our va. Now the curve fa and va, it will be a slanting va, a slanting curve, not a straight curve as we no, as we drilled the sa, za, da, and da. So this one, it will be different. It will be a curved, uh, 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 sorry, a slanting curve. For example, my fa, my fa. And also I have va whereby it will also be a slanting curve, but a dark curve. All right, so this is fa and this is va. Va should be dark, fa should be light. Also, we have the sha and za. The sha is also slanted. And when you see our this curve here, it is from the 
from the light uh, to the right of your hand. So you will be starting it from your light, not like the others. So the sa will be a light stroke and the za will be a dark stroke. So these are the curved strokes. And as I said earlier, we have the curved stroke, horizontal stroke, up stroke, and downward strokes. So let's look which are the, the upward strokes. Sorry. Upward strokes. So under upward strokes we have la, we have we, and we have ye. For instance, when we are saying Lord, when we are saying well, when we are saying yellow, so we, those words will be represented with a certain drillings, and it will be a upward stroke. That means from your line, your stroke will be starting from there beginning of the line going upwards so this one will be so when we are drilling the l w and y we will be having like l will look like la so like when i'm uh, when i want to generate a word like lord i will use the the upward la then i include my the downward d the da the da stroke as i showed you earlier so also we have the way sound whereby it's a you will start it from the line going upwards so it look like this way then, remember when you are pronouncing your way, it has a hook here when it's going upwards. Also, we have the Y, whereby we have, uh, it is like that, a hook, then a line going upwards. So, it's uh, an upward Stroke. Sorry. So these are the strokes which we will be using to generate words. And words are generated, English words are generated using the strokes plus the vowels. For instance, we have the vowels. So we have our vowels. We have the A. We have A. We have E, we have O, and we have U. Like when we were kids, we were saying A, E, E, O, U. So this is our vowels that we will be using to generate a word from our strokes. So in order you to identify how you indicate these, these, these vowels, we normally have a also light vowels and uh, dark vowels. For instance, when you are pronouncing a word with a, a vowel, like bam, you are using a heavy sound, bam. So a will be a dark vowel. Then we have e and e, we, it's light. So like when you are saying light, like when you are saying um, let, it's heavy, you are not using your, uh, it, sorry, it's light, you are not using your heavy sound. You are using a heavy, uh, a light sound. So the E and the I is a light vowel. Then we have O. Like when we are pronouncing a word like boy, the O inside there is heavy. So the O will be a dark vowel. And also we have U, whereby it's a 
light vowel like by we are using a a light sound so under these we have a dot vowels dot vowels and dash vowels dot vowels we have the a the e the e and dash vowels we have o and u and when i'm saying of dot it's a, a normal dot a normal dot when i'm talking of dash is a normal dash a normal dash so these are dot vowels which are three of them and the two of them are the dash vowels we have positioning of these vowels how do we position the vowels in the words that we are going to generate using the consonants that we have so we have to know first the positioning of the vowels we have positioning positioning of the vowels so we normally have the first position second position and third position first second and third position so under first position the vowel is placed in the beginning of the stroke the in the beginning example let's use the stroke ta as we had said it's a downward stroke and we say this drilled how downward stroke which is light so we are using this example to represent our first place vowel which is which is drilled in the beginning of the stroke in the beginning of the stroke so we have my ta here this is my book and i'm saying in the beginning of the stroke so my my vowel will be there so a dot or a dash so here is in the beginning of the stroke then i have my second position second position of vowels they are placed in the middle of the stroke in the middle of the stroke so this is in the middle of the stroke so if this is my term where will i place my middle my middle vowel it will be here and my da my dot and my dash they are there so if i have a whole vowel and a half vowel they will be in the middle of that stroke then i have my third position my third position is whereby you drill you drill or you indicate your vowel at the end of the stroke end of the stroke so for example my term i just use the term and we are saying at the end of the stroke so this is my stroke at the end it will be here 
at the end of the stroke. So this one is what we call the positioning of the vowel. And in order you to understand how you place this positioning of the vowels, we also have we also have the positioning of these consonants. The positioning of the consonant, the consonants that we said, the pa, ba, da, cha, ja, those are the consonants, and they are the ones we are calling them strokes. So we have the positioning of those consonants in order you to be able to identify where will I place my vowel, where will I place the vowel in maybe in the first position, in the second position, or in third position. So let's see the positioning of the consonants or the strokes. The strokes I said they are the consonants. So the positioning of the stroke, we have the first position, the second position. We have the second position and also we have third position. And the first position we place our strokes above the line. So here we will the first position strokes are placed above, placed above the line. So, when you are drilling your stroke in first position, it will be above the line. Which line? Line of your page, line of your book. So, it will be above the line. For instance, when I am using pa, and I want to show you, and I want to, uh, to use a first position. I will put it in above the line. So this is my tap, above the line, above the line. Also, we have uh, the second position. Under the second position, under the second position, the stroke is drilled along the line. It is along the line. That one is the second position. And when I'm talking of along the line or on the line, along the line or on the line, you can use along or on the line. So when I'm saying on the line, if this is my term, it will be on the line, on the line. And then I have my third position. My third position of a stroke is going through the line. We drill it through the line, through the line. So, for example, if I have my tongue, it will go through the line, through the line. So, it has to go through the line of your book. So, these are the positioning of the strokes and the positioning of the vowels. I hope you have understood the difference, the vowels and the strokes. Also, we have the short forms and phrases. And when we are talking of short forms and phrases, short forms and phrases and intersections, they are the strokes whereby you don't indicate what? Vowels. So, for instance, when I'm talking of do, hit, I will drill that stroke in a short form way because I don't need what? The vowel. So when I'm using the short forms and phrases, the, the, that one is the summary of the, or the short form. And the way you pronounce it, short form. It's whereby you have the stroke with the meaning, but it does not have what? The vowel. So with that, also we have the circle S. Remember, in our curved strokes, we end up curved S. 
And now we have also a circle hairs. What are what do I mean of circle hairs? The circle hairs. Circle hairs. So when I'm if I want to use a circle hairs, maybe when I'm saying pays. My hairs there at the end of the pay pays. You can hear the sound of S. So you will use the circle. But when you are saying or you are pronouncing a word like C, C, I will use a carved S. So under P's we use a circle S. So we will be having our P and our S. For example, let's drill our P's. P and S. So you include your S immediately at the end of the P. So it will be pays. And then you include your vowel A there. So the circle S is used to indicate the sound of Z and the normal S. And is drilled anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. So, Anti clockwise, not clockwise. So we will be using anti clockwise. For instance, when you are given a word like dates, we have two strokes here, and then the circle is, and then the vowels. So we have the da, we have ta, and we have sa. And then the vowels. So in short, in order you to identify the, the, the consonants or this word, first pronounce it so that you may hear which are the words that the consonants that you can hear. The consonants that you can hear. So for instance, under dates, we have the da, we have the ta, we have the sa. So we can hear dates. You can hear the three strokes. And let us drill it. Then we include our circle S as we are saying. And then we include our vowels. So we have the date. Sorry. Date. Then my vowels. So this one is date. This is da. The ta and sa. Da is dark, ta is light, and then we have the circle as which is moving and clockwise. Okay, so I have my first passage whereby it will help you to drill those strokes that we have gone through them. So let me read the first passage so that it will be. It will make you be able to drill the strokes with the right speed. The fact is we lack all of the cash to pay the large debt to the bank for February. We had to give them a check on the 5th February for the January debt. And the February debt is, as we know, too large to be paid with heat. It will be unusual for the company to delay but who will give us the cash so that one is the first passage of 65 words per, per minute the second passage it's about the title is telephone instructions dictated to secretary by Area sales manager. Let me start. Ask Paul for the page 
with up to date data for February. Attach, attach the page for January to hit. Had them both up to give the cash for the month and date the page at the bottom with his name below. Give both pages back to Paul to check. Ask him to do the job with no delay. So that one is a passage of 60 words per minute. Title, Correspondence between a company and a travel agency about the opening of a business account. Dear sir, I have been advised by a business associate, Alan Day, of the Day Advertising Agency, to contact you about handling travel arrangements for this company. Mr. Day, Mr. Day has strongly recommended your firm and I am writing to request that you arrange the opening of an account in company's name. The majority of our senior staff are frequent travelers with many trips throughout this country and regular visits abroad. The main forms of travel are flying using the business class and occasionally first class rail. The hotels preferred are those in city centers and usually owned by one of the international hotel group. In the matter of accommodation and airlines used, I am pleased to leave decisions to the travel agent, provide high standards are maintained and our staff are satisfied. I am attaching a list of names of company personnel who would be using your service together with the names of the company's bankers and accountants should you require to take help business references. Meanwhile, would you please let me have a copy of your terms or business I would like also to meet the member of your staff who would be handling this account. Yours faithful. Okay, students, this is the end of our of our top of our class and in the next class we will start with the third place vowels. Have a nice evening.